So what is your school mascot and school colors? Great question. So our school colors are dark blue and white, and our mascot is the Blue Devil. You were, they uh, they kind of saw that. We're a little interested about that one, and especially the next question. So how did it that a, a blue devil became your mascot? Okay, well, um, the origins come from World War I, where French soldiers were called the Blue Devils, and they fought in distinctive blue capes and hats. So when Duke decided to name a mascot in 1921, the Blue Devils were nominated for matching what had already been chosen as the school's colors of blue and white. So the editors of the student newspaper started referring to Duke's athletic teams as the Blue Devils, and the name just caught on from there. So ever since 1923, we've been the Blue Devils. Excellent. I see some, that's something I didn't even know. <laughs> yeah, a lot of Duke students don't know it either, actually. <laughs> Go ahead. How many students attend your school? So how many students attend Duke? So we have 6,700 undergraduate students and about 7,000 graduate students as well. So it's a medium-sized university. Wow, for its reputation, I thought it's it's I thought it was a much larger school. I'm surprised at the, the lower number of students. That's great, though. That's excellent for, for attending school. It is. It is. We have about 1,600 students each year. So it's a pretty good-sized class, but definitely small enough that you can get to know everybody. So how big are your classes at Duke, for the most part? Well, um, the on about 70% of our classes have fewer than 20 students. So that's about the average. But then there are some that can be really big, like 250 or 300 people for introductory classes. Excellent. Now, I tell the kids all the time, some of those really, really large classes, you know, I know when I went away, I, I wasn't really prepared to kind of attend school in what was almost like a movie theater setting. Do you guys have any of those really large lecture halls where you hold a, an awful lot of students there? Mm -hmm. Do you guys have those kind of large halls over at Oh, Duke? we do. Um, one of them is actually a movie theater. Um, and on Fridays, they show movies there for students. But during the um, day, during weekdays, it's a classroom. Excellent. How far are you guys from Keensburg? So, we looked this up. We are exactly 475 miles from Keensburg, which is about eight hours driving. Excellent. So what types of things are there to do on and around your school? There is a lot to do on and around school. So Duke is located in Durham, North Carolina, which is about two hours from the beach and two hours from the mountains. So we're in a really great place. Um, there are a lot of things to do in the city of Durham, such as going to the Durham Bulls baseball games, going to performances at the Durham Performing Arts Center. And then there are also a lot of things to do on campus, like going to student plays, music, performances and sports games as well. I know I, I've, I've never visited Duke's campus but I've you know it's a very picturesque campus when, it you, is. when you look at it. Uh, I've seen a lot of photographs. Uh, you guys have been you know very famous for your basketball for many many years and you see a lot of images of the campus and it's really one of those traditional gothic looking with the large stone buildings. I mean an absolutely beautiful campus. It is. We, um, here at Duke, we actually call it the Gothic Wonderland. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Now, being that we would be coming from out of state, do you, well, first question was, do you have a lot of students who come from out of state? We do. Mm -hmm. um, actually, only 15% of Duke students come from the Carolinas, so that's North and South Carolina. So that means that 85% of our students are coming from outside of, are coming from out of state, even internationally. So with that being said, do most students stick around? Is there a lot of things to do on the weekends? Or do most people kind of head home or head, head out, out other than on campus? 
There definitely is. We actually um, are a very residential campus. So our students live on campus for three years. Um, some choose during their senior year to move off campus. But because of that, everyone stays around um, for the weekends. And I guess if you live close, you have the option of going home occasionally. But there's so much to do on campus that usually students don't choose to do so. Um, we have over 500 clubs and organizations. So there's a ton of stuff going on. And um, in addition to the things Kate mentioned, you can do things through the involvement in those clubs, like dance groups, music groups, like acapella, orchestra and band, um, marching band. There are different theater groups. We also have um, Greek life, so sororities and fraternities, which um, about one third of our student body is involved in. And um, we also have a student newspaper called The Chronicle. So there's plenty of things for students to be involved in, both um, during the week and on weekends. So just like some of you guys go to clubs here after school, you guys could have that same experience, but on a much larger level if you did decide to attend Duke. Exactly. Go ahead, Samantha. So what types of sports are offered at Duke? Good question. There are lots of sports offered at Duke. We actually have 26 varsity teams, men's and women's, and then we also have lots of club and intramural sports. So club sports are not at the varsity level, but if you really love playing a sport in high school and want to continue it in college, which is not on the varsity level, then you can play on one of our club teams. Our intramural teams are where groups of friends, either from a residence hall or from one of the clubs that Bree mentioned earlier, can get together and form a team and play soccer, ultimate frisbee, rugby, whatever it is that they want to do. We actually even have a Quidditch team, so that's pretty fun. And um, any Duke student can go to see any of these games, including the varsity games, for free. There are no tickets for students. It's all just first come, first serve. So they're very accessible. Excellent. You know, it's, it's surprising, too, to hear that you guys have such a large number of Division I varsity sports, and your size of your school is so small. You know, typically when you hear of having that many varsity sports at the Division I level, you would think you're, you're, you know, you're thinking about a Texas or a, a, a Florida with 40 or 50,000 students. So, I mean, not only do you have such a high academic reputation, but you have a very high reputation for sports as well. That's definitely what we're known for, the balance between the academics and everything outside the classroom as well. Do you guys have any rivals? We definitely do. Um, we consider our main rival to be uh, the Tar Heels over at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. And um, so one of the biggest events of the year is when Duke and UNC play each other in basketball. They're only eight miles down the road from us, so there's a long tradition of um, competitiveness between our two schools. And um, out of that, there have been born several fun traditions. So in basketball, when we beat UNC, as we did this year, um, there are campus bonfires after the home wins, which are a lot of fun. And then um, in football, the big thing is the, um, the winning team between Duke and UNC wins the victory bell. And it's a big bell, almost like the Liberty Bell, and they get to take it back to their own campus and paint it in their own color blue. So there's the joke that Duke is dark blue and Carolina is light blue, so you have to pick the right blue, depending on which school you go to. Oh, excellent. Now, how about academic rivals? I know you guys have a very high academic standard. Do you guys have a, a big academic rival? Is North Carolina your academic rival as well? or? I would definitely say that we really enjoy being in the what's known as the research triangle and that is pinpointed by several different very high quality universities right here in North Carolina. So Duke is in Durham. As Bree mentioned, North Carolina at Chapel Hill is in Chapel Hill, which is just eight miles down the road. And then just about 20 miles away is North Carolina State University, which is in Raleigh. And Durham, Chapel Hill, and Raleigh together form the Research Triangle, which is a really great area. We actually have the highest concentration of PhDs in any one given area of anywhere in the country. So being around those other universities is a wonderful resource for us here at Duke. Excellent. So 
So besides the, the athletic traditions there, do you have any uh, traditions on campus, maybe like through convocation or something along those lines? Um, we do. Well, one of the traditions that is a little bit um, athletically focused is that for the big Duke UNC game, students will live in tents for almost two months in what we call Krzyzewskiville, which is named after our head coach. And they'll live there in order to um, get a good spot in line for the game. And then um, some other fun traditions we have is one of the main landmarks on campus is the Duke Chapel. And it's the tallest building on campus. So um, during your senior year, we have senior chapel climbs. And senior get, seniors get to climb all the way to the top of the chapel. And when you get up to the top, you can go out on the roof there and you can see all of campus. So it's a really fun tradition to get to do before you graduate. Excellent. Now, they still go to class, even though they're living in Krzyzewskiville, right? They do. Every um, <laughs> People will sit outside of their tents in big bundled up coats and gloves, and they'll type on their computers and do their homework, because that's always the main focus. Excellent. So what is Duke best known for? Great question. So we already touched on this a little bit, but Duke is definitely known for its combination of excellence in athletics and academics. Um, students come here from all over the world to take classes from our renowned professors, take advantage of the really unique opportunities that we have here, whether that be in research or in service, and then also for our really fun school environment where we have that school spirit and have a lot of different things that you can get involved in outside of the classroom as well. So when, when most students come to Duke and take a, a tour or visit, what do you think it is that makes them want to choose to attend Duke? <laughs> well, one of the things we always hear comments about is the great weather here. Um, and today we got a little bit of rain, but um, in comparison to many of the other schools um, that are academically at par with us, we have wonderful weather. We maybe get one inch of snow every year, and students, particularly coming from the Northeast, where you guys are, really love that change. Um, I think also what students seem to notice when they come on tours is, as Kate mentioned, the sort of um, school pride that we have. And everywhere you'll go, you'll see students in big uh, sweatshirts with the big D-U-K-E across their chest. So everywhere you go, you can see um, students representing their school spirit. I definitely remember that when I visited, what stood out to me was just how many people were wearing Duke t-shirts when I looked around mm -hmm. campus. A little louder. So how big is your campus? <laughs> Good question. So Duke has a pretty large campus, but uh, deceptively so. Our campus is technically 9,000 acres, which is really big. But 8,000 of that is in the Duke Forest. And the Duke Forest um, surrounds campus and includes our Lemur Center, includes some great research areas, and then also just some wonderful nature areas to hike or ride a bike in. Um, so the physical campus itself where students live and go to class is 1,000 acres. So it wouldn't take too far to walk across campus? No, definitely not. Although it can be a hike from one end to the other. <laughs> And we, also have, we also have something unique, which is a campus specifically designed just for freshmen. Um, so Duke's main campus, the Gothic Wonderland that we talked about earlier, is called West Campus. And then about a mile down the road, we have East Campus um, that is very different in architecture. It's red brick. And that's where all first-year students live, and so it creates a really unique community just for first-year students. Oh, that's nice. It kind of kind of gives you the opportunity to really get to know your fellow classmates, and then you know once you do move on to that upperclassman years, the you know the bonds you form during that first year together, you kind of have that knowledge of each other already as you move on. Exactly. It makes the transition a lot easier because you're going just to a smaller environment for your first year. Excellent. Now, how do most people get around the Duke campus, both east and west? Well, um, the majority of students, as you were saying, it's not very big. So the majority of students walk. You can walk from your dorm to class. Um, however, we do have um, a little bit of separation between our east and our west campus. It's um, just under a mile. So on a really nice day, if you have the time, you can walk. But we also do have buses 
that run between the two campuses. So if you live on East, maybe you'll take the bus over the West and then walk. Um, and then we do have a certain percentage of students who ride their bikes everywhere. And if you don't have a bike, you can actually even rent one from the school, which is a, a really nice opportunity. Wow. So um, for the most part, we have great weather, so it, it's not it's nice to walk around campus to get to class. Excellent. So what are your most popular majors at Duke? Um, so we have a lot of popular majors here at Duke. Uh, some, of, some of them include economics, biology, public policy, which is pretty unique here at Duke, psychology, biomedical engineering. We have a separate engineering school for undergraduates. And then our art programs, such as music and dance, are really growing. Now, do you guys also have like a medical, a medical and law school? We do. Um, those are graduate programs, so they're distinct from our undergraduate population. But um, both our medical school is actually ranked number nine in the country, so it's a really great school. And um, the law school, I think, is top 20, so they're both really wonderful graduate programs. And the advantage to having such great medical and law schools here is that if that's something you are interested in pursuing as an undergraduate, you're able to utilize those resources, even though you're not in graduate school yet. Excellent. Now, I know this will be a question later on, but I'm going to ask you now. Do you guys have a veterinary program? We do no. not. Okay. Go ahead. Here's, so here's the big question. What is the cost of your school? Oh, the big question. <laughs> Hopefully your parents are going to be worrying about this a little bit more than you guys, but the total cost of attending Duke University is about $50,000 a year, which is comparable to similarly sized private universities. Um, more than half of our students receive financial aid in the form of grants and loans, and Duke has a commitment to ensuring that all students who are, who are admitted are able to attend the university, which means that we practice need-blind admissions and don't consider your ability to pay when making an admissions decision. Excellent. So that kind of means when you guys apply to Duke, if you have what it takes to get in with, you know, both academic, uh, your test scores, as well as, you know, your extracurricular activities that you do outside of school, if you're an uh, appealing enough student for Duke to accept you, no matter what, if you get in, they will help you uh, find a way to pay for the school. Is that correct? Exactly. Perfect. Do you offer scholarships? Now, do you offer scholarships? Okay. Um, we do have, most of our scholarships, per se, are financial aid, like Kate was mentioning, so they're need-based, but we do have a small um, portion of merit scholarships based on academic merit, but it's only about 1% of our um, undergraduate population that earns those, so they're very competitive. And they also have the opportunity as well, you know, if you guys will fill out the federal form for financial aid that if it is a need base, they will have the opportunity to receive federal aid, which is like, you'll borrow money from the government to help pay for it, and then once you're done and you get a wonderful job, which I'm sure most students from Duke do, you'll have the ability to pay that money back to them, right? That's correct. Excellent, got it. Do you have any famous alumni at Duke? We do have a few, we do have a few. Um, so I would say the most famous people around campus are the Duke basketball players. They are very easy to recognize because they're so tall, and they're pretty fun to see around campus. Um, but we also have three Olympians who have attended Duke, um, two from diving who won medals in the London Olympics this past summer, and then Becca Ward, who was a gold medalist for fencing in the Beijing Olympics. Um, Bruce Springsteen's daughter currently attends Duke. Rob right, Lowe's son attends Duke, and the Princess of Saudi Arabia <laughs> currently attends Duke. Excellent. What do you like most about your school? Now you are both alumni of the school. That's yeah. correct. Now, being that you are both alumni and now representatives of the school, what did you like most about your experience at Duke and now working for Duke? Well, I would say that my favorite part of being at Duke had to be my classmates. Um, there's, as we've been mentioning, such an incredible sense of school spirit and school pride, which um, was always such a fun thing to be a part of. But what I always found to be really incredible is I would meet people in my classes and we'd get along and we'd um, joke around as friends, but then you could sit down and have really deep intellectual conversations with them. 
and everyone is just so intelligent around you that you really feel like they help you to grow both socially and academically while you're here. And then I really love the opportunities outside of the classroom that we have here. We have a program called Duke Engage, which pays for students to go do serve community service over the summer. And I use my Duke Engage to work at Opportunity. People use Duke Engage to go all over the world, to India, to Iceland, to Romania, and it's a really, really cool program. Um, School. We, uh, we wanted to know, is there a, a, a traditional cheer or song that we may learn that we could probably practice here uh, on campus? Or on That's, our campus. <laughs> I can see how you'd want to ask that at every school. We'll, we'll give you a little demonstration. Okay. Let's go Duke! Let's go Duke! Let's go Duke! And then another one you can adopt that the Cameron Crazies do is really simple. You just go, uh. <laughs> You guys want to give it a try? All right, get your signs ready. <laughs> ready? Uh, uh, gonna shake them a little bit, like you're gonna, you're gonna get them ready so they miss the foul shot. <laughs> Girls, I can't thank you enough. It was absolutely wonderful. Uh, you guys really are knowledgeable of the school, especially being alumni, and you give a really unique perspective, I think, too, uh, being that you did attend the school uh, and, and gave them a really good understanding of, of uh, you know, I think there's an enormous sense of pride that I've, I've always found, especially in Duke graduates. I mean, it's a na nationally recognized school because of its athletics, but what a lot of people really fail to notice is how academically high uh, your mark is set by in, in the classroom as well. So although you may get recognized for basketball and sports, uh, your academics are, are completely through the roof in, in, in the top 15, top 20, top 10 in some cases in the country. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. We absolutely love talking to you guys. All right, what do we say? Thank you. Go You're what? welcome. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Of course. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye.